Hello everyone, my name is Stefan Metra. I'm, I'm from BBTV on the Future Now channel today. And um, that's for our weekly Future Now, what's on important, the uh, really important things to do today. We will be welcoming in a few moments uh, Jason Kanigan from the Closing Engine, as well as the founder of uh, the Future Now channel, Mr. Stephen Monaco. So let me find if I can find Mr. Kanigan. Mr. Kanigan, uh, do we have? Yes, Jason, how are you doing? Oh. <laughs> Hi, Stavad. Thanks. And uh, appreciate my BBTV for hosting this. Okay. Uh, let's try to have as well um, Stephen Monaco from Future Now. One, two, three. Here we are. Hello, Stephen. How are you doing Hello. today? I'm very well. How are you both? So you guys have exciting things to, to discuss today, right? Always. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm going to leave the microphone open for you guys. Um, I will pop up at the end of uh, uh, the short form webinar today. And uh, I think we're going to talk about the, the topic. Ah, does advertising actually drive sales? Ah, that's a good question. I think, I think there are a lot of people that would be, you know, willing to figure out if yes or not. <laughs> Well, we have, we have quite a bit of data from mm -hmm. the big sporting event that just happened. A lot of people watch the Super Bowl, but uh, not as many as you might think. And Stephen has done quite a bit of research on what happened. Well, we know most people don't watch TV commercials, right? I, mm -hmm. I personally dislike most of them. I don't feel they're relevant to me in any way whatsoever. But the Super Bowl is the exception to that rule. Millions of people who aren't even football fans around the world do tune in, and it's a pop culture television event, isn't it, right? So they're there specifically to watch the commercials. They're not even really to watch the game itself. So, Stephen, what did a 30-second television ad spot go for this year? What price tag did it have? This year, it uh, set a new record and was just over $5 million for 30 seconds of air. And, wow. of course, that doesn't include the cost of the production of a commercial and the agency and all that, which is often many times that. Right. Mm -hmm. So what, what did you see that you liked? Uh, just, you know, in no order from, from Sunday's big game, what, what did you see in the, on the commercial side? Because I know we chatted a little bit. You, you were doing double duty. You were watching the game. It was a great game. I had a hell of a time, a fun time watching it. And, and I'm not even a big American football fan, but mm -hmm. uh, I still enjoyed the heck out of the game. And there were some pretty good commercials in there. There were. What stood out to you? Well, I, I have a sampling here in no particular order that I gathered from a number of different sources. So, of course, this is all very subjective, but... Hmm. Um, uh, the Tide commercials went over really well. Uh, yeah. The celebrity pitch man, David uh, Harbour, which some people might recognize from the Netflix series Stranger Things, um, he did really well. The, mm -hmm. the, the They were like, a couple of them were like fake ads. Like mm -hmm. one was a fake ad for Old Spice that turned out to be a Tide right. ad where the, the two of them were sitting on the very long White right. horse, just super stars. long white horse. Yeah, right. yeah. I mean, <laughs> using that kind of humor went really well, and they ran an ad in all of the four quarters, so there was continuity and humor, lighthearted. Um, th that went real well. Um, Twenty million dollars. Hmm? Twenty yeah, million right. dollars. Wow. Uh, you know, Procter and Gamble, the parent yeah. company, they can they can afford that. <laughs> um, you know, the Amazon ad did really well. Mm -hmm. About the uh, Alexa, Alexa loses its voice, and, right. and you know, as How you know, central, I'm, right? I'm sorry. How central that voice has become to a lot of people's lives, right? Right, right. and you know, again, it's all subjective. But like you and I were talking mm -hmm. a, a bit ago, like, did people recognize Jeff Bezos, the CEO yeah. of Amazon? Uh, I mean, some of us know what he looks like. I think most people don't. So. Um, and it's always, it's always. He was uh, in it, but yeah, it, he wasn't the focus, fortunately. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. right. Um, the the Doritos Mountain Dew commercials did well. Mm -hmm. um, the pairing of the celebrities and, and the energy of those were was something that resonated with people. Um, the Budweiser ad did, right. did really well. There was no mention of beer. No whatsoever. humor in that one at all. There was no humor. Um, 
but there was no mention of beer. Instead, it focused right. on like humanitarian issues and the that staple of clean drinking water mm-hmm. that people need, um, especially in those areas hit by the hurricane in Puerto Rico and the southern parts of the, the U.S. Um, right. One that was really, really funny and people found hilarious was the NFL's own promotion for the, the league, which was the one that was a, a spoof on the, the reenactment of the finale scene in the movie Dirty Dancing with Eli Manning mm-hmm. and and mm-hmm. Odell Beckham Jr. Um, right. It was it was just humorous, you know. It's just funny. They had the choreography right. down pat to the uh, to the movie. Um, that was very late in the in the game too that they played that, and there were a number of mm-hmm. uh, of Manning spots before that, which I think was good because if they had just run you right into this thing <laughs> immediately, I think the shot could have been too great. But they used they used a good strategy over the game of showing you him and, and other people a few times so that you got used to them and okay it was going to be wacky and zany and gonzo and then okay here here's our big send off <laughs> yeah um he's done a fair amount of pitch work so to speak um mm-hmm. as for commercials and one that gets a, an honorable mention was the the steven tyler of aerosmith mm-hmm. for the kia stinger um right. people found it hard to relate to aerosmith's front man actually driving a stinger. I certainly did. Yeah. yeah. But um, the concept was good. People liked the concept mm-hmm. about the, the dream on music and him driving in reverse to meet his mm-hmm. younger self. That, that resonated with people. And um, th- the thing about that ad, which is important in any ad, any good ad, is that it was memorable. People remembered mm-hmm. that it was for Kia. And that's that's a good thing. Uh, on the other side of the coin, there are a couple ads that didn't go well uh, or weren't well received at all, uh, generally speaking. Mm-hmm. And before I hit on them, um, uh, the the tone this year of ads overall was humor. That was right. they they steered clear of of anything political, just because the nation is divided. Uh, and polarized politically, and they just decided mm-hmm. to stay away from that. Um, that said, Dodge um, did a Ram commercial with uh, a quote from Martin, Dr. Martin right. Luther King Jr., uh, and that didn't go over well at all because people felt that it was not um, – it, it, it went against his teachings and his beliefs. So that was. Yeah, I felt. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't really in support of a free market economy. That's for sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, when it comes to ads in general, and especially when you're spending five million bucks just for the mm-hmm. airtime, you know, choosing the content and what it is you're going to the creative, as they call it in ad mm-hmm. circles, but the content. Um, you know, I mean, it, sometimes it's a real head scratcher as far as like why they chose what. They chose, mm-hmm. and then the other one um, was the T-Mobile ad that showed all the uh, culturally diverse babies. Uh, yeah. That was not well received at all. the The voiceover was done by uh, Kerry Washington, uh, yeah, mm-hmm. Kerry Washington, and people perceived the message that she delivered as like condescending and being talked down yeah. to. Which I, I hated it. I, I felt like I was being told what to think um, right out of some Orwellian universe. <laughs> well, you weren't alone, Jason. Yeah. yeah. There, there were, uh, there were many who were. How about that diet Coke ad with the mango flavor? It was kind of weird. It, it didn't it, work for the, me the, either. The perception of that one was that it was very flat and that mm. in a night of noteworthy ads, there was nothing really about it that stood out. I mean, she was dancing, but her dancing wasn't like really exceptional. Right? Nothing like that. And they, they really didn't do much to, to like sell the product or I don't know. That one got a lot of, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's Diet Coke mango is going to make you a little weird. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. And there were some questions about Coke and a, a company that is, you know, know so much about branding and stuff like why they up the mm. Diet Coke flavors that are coming out, like why they chose mango, like the strongest <laughs> flavor. So 
who knows? Again, it's it's all subjective. Right. Um, the one that was, I don't know if it was hated the most, but it, it got like some of the, the lowest rank uh, mm-hmm. ranking. It didn't it didn't create that visceral reaction like you spoke to about the T T right. Mobile one, but it was the the Groupon mm-hmm. commercial. Which if you even remember, it was. Um, it, it, they went. They took a long time. You know, thirty second spot. They took a long time to to get to the end, where right. someone just gets hit in the stomach with a football. Yeah, Mister Big Business. Yeah. Yeah, and it it seemed like it took them thirty seconds to write the script <laughs> for a thirty yeah, second. Yeah, I remember yeah. watching it and going, "Really? This is what they came up with?" And of course, I'm going to give a stupid caveman laugh at the end result, but. <laughs> I, I honestly didn't even remember it was for Groupon. So, and that's yeah. that's a uh, that's a big mistake. I mean, that's a big problem mm-hmm. with the creative that you come up with. And if they don't remember again, you might not re- relate to Steven Tyler driving a Kia, but it was memorable. You remembered mm-hmm. it was Kia, right? And you know, Dream On was was cool um, to most people. You know, a quick side about that: since they've uh, since that ad's run. Mm-hmm. It's on YouTube now in reverse as they run the commercial backwards. So the sound is backwards. And at the 53 second mark, there is a secret message. So if you care to dial into YouTube and find that, maybe mm-hmm. you can see what is said or hear what is said at the okay. 53 second mark. Um, Interesting. Just, yeah. So this, this Super Bowl, Steven, now it was over the 50 second one. <laughs> That's a lot. It drew something ridiculous uh, over a hundred million viewers but what was that like in contrast with past years well it's really interesting and i'm glad you brought it up because it was down it was the lowest rated super bowl or lowest watched super bowl in nine years Hmm. and that is noteworthy because the last time that the ratings were that low nine years ago is when the um new orleans saints just blew out the indian Indianapolis Colts. Hmm. And when when there's not much of a contest left in the game and it's a blowout where one team's up by 30 points or something like that, people tune out. You know, they just mm-hmm. they get bored like, uh, you know, this isn't really a game anymore. And yeah. but that wasn't the case Sunday. It was a very close game. And down it to the two minutes. Fun game. <laughs> it was. Yeah. I mean, down to two minutes uh into the game or left in the game, you didn't know who was gonna win. Mm-hmm. Um but so in this case, people didn't watch or see the ads, maybe, or watch the game, not because they showed up and then dropped out, but they never got there in the first place. And that's key. Yeah. That's key. So, you know, uh, and you know, yet the I'm price sorry. of that ad, the price of that airtime for that 30 second spot, it didn't just, drop. Uh, it didn't it, drop. Exactly. So it brings up that old adage that we were talking about a minute ago about the, the tree in the forest. Mm-hmm. You know, if a, if a tree falls in a forest and no one's around to hear it, did, did it really fall? Did, yeah. yeah so make, so I guess the parallel there is if, uh, if expensive television advertising airs, if people weren't watching, did it actually air? Well, they, they spent the money. <laughs> There's yeah. a few other places, aren't there, where uh, the same thing could be said. Absolutely. I mean, uh, radio ads, print ads, all types of advertising, outdoor billboards, YouTube. direct mail pieces, YouTube ads. I mean, gosh, so many people. The The majority of us can't wait for the five seconds to go by in which it takes for us to skip the ad. And then, of course, we're seeing more and more of those annoying like interstitial ads where you have right. to – wait through the 15 seconds or the 30 seconds before your content appears. So um, I'm looking forward to the backlash to that, which is already beginning. I'm sure. I'm sure it is. And we're going to see a lot more of them is, is what the uh, first before it goes away, it'll get worse. huh? Mm-hmm. That's, that's true. Uh, so if people aren't paying attention to your ads, so they don't even see them, are they driving sales? Well, the answer to that would be no. Um, and the key here is that people don't like to be interrupted. 
Um, mm -hmm. Consumers have changed the way that they consume media over the last decade or, or so dramatically. I mean, for the first time, they're in complete control of the way they consume um, media and entertainment. And, you know, they just they don't want to be interrupted. Um, you know, in this age of binge watching, binge watching programs on demand via subscription uh, mm -hmm. sites like Net, uh, Netflix, you know, people enjoy watching what they want what they want with, without interruption. So wait a minute. If people aren't watching TV ads, and, and in many cases they're going to platforms where there aren't ads, like Netflix, how are companies and brands going to reach the audiences? Well, they're going to use a, a relatively age-old tactic. You're going to see so much more of this, of, of mm. paid product placement, um, okay. which also is known as embedded marketing which believe it or not goes back uh, in the motion pictures all the way to the 20s. Uh, the first the first uh, movie ever to win an Oscar for the best uh -huh. picture was the silent film called Wings, which starred uh, Gary Cooper. Yeah, Gary uh -huh. Cooper. A little before our, our time, but... Um, <laughs> and that, that film had a uh, prominently placed Hershey bar in the late 20s in... Uh, in one of the scenes. So, <laughs> so I was just imagining the ingredients list was probably included something like cocaine <laughs> at the time. <laughs> it may have been. I don't know about Certainly that. Certainly cane sugar. <laughs> <laughs> that was a terrible aside. But, but speaking okay. of television, like soap, soap operas were literally about product placement there, wasn't it? So yeah, and, and in the 50s, it was really overt where, you know, the, the character playing the part um, mm -hmm. would, like, pick up the box of, of laundry detergent, literally. Uh, and, you know, I the, really am going to enjoy doing my laundry with this tide. Ding! Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, well, that reminds me, um, if you remember the film The Truman Show, uh, they, mm -hmm. they had, uh, what was her name? Laura Linney was the actress that played... Uh, Truman's wife, they did they did that stuff on that show, you mm. know, where she would turn to the camera in the kitchen and 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 pitch a product like they did in the in the fifties when soap or even before the fifties and soaps. Um, and there's a ton of product placement that we might not be aware of. Um, like there's been episodes of Modern Family that mm -hmm. are all about Apple. And Apple products and, and the use of Apple products throughout that program. And that's a, you know, that's a very uh, top rated show, heavily right. watched or highly watched. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's no accident that they're using iPhones and iPods and iPads and talking about, you know, I have a cooler one or the newer version than you. That is all very intentional, but they do a wonderful job of weaving it into the story so it doesn't feel overt. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a critical point. You know, in other places, like naturally there. Uh, other things you you might not realize uh, mm -hmm. is that lyrics to songs mm -hmm. often have paid product placement to just to drop the drop the mm -hmm. name. Like um, Cavassier and and different liquor. That's especially popular in mm. rap and and Makes hip hop sense. and stuff. I'm glad um, you didn't try and simulate something. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, both of us should stay away from that. I'm not a rap <laughs> fan. Sorry, for anyone who who as a musician, it's like where's the music? Uh, anyway, music videos, lots of paid product placement in them, and video games for years and years, like mm. uh, have had them. You know, the driving games and stuff like that. Okay. You're passing billboards and stuff. I mean, right. and and just there, it's becoming more and more prevalent. So um, mm -hmm. in the age of the, the DVR set-top box um, where paid product placement is, is starting to soar, and it's a mm -hmm. multi-billion dollar industry just in the United States alone. So, so we're skipping those commercials and those feisty advertising executives have to figure <laughs> out a, a more clever way to get the thing in front of us without pointing to it and going, do you see it? Do you see it? Look at, look at this. You know? It's got to be more subtle, huh? So, so less interruption and, geez, I think people really hate 
being interrupted by ads on on the internet more than they do even them while watching TV, don't they? Well, it's they just hate being interrupted. Period. Yeah. It it doesn't seem to matter what we're doing. We don't like being interrupted mm -hmm. with information that isn't relevant to us. So, um, yeah, I mean, as far as when it comes to um, the internet. There's, um, I have some stats here from the IAB, okay. which is the inter, I'm sorry, the Interactive Advertising Bureau, and their report from 2016 on on ad blockers was that 26% of desktop users and 15% of of mobile consumers use ad blockers to remove ads from publishers' websites, an increase of 30% globally over the prior year. Hmm. Sorry, my little headset fell out part of live broadcasting. Um, so 74% uh, of Americans say that they leave websites that tell them to disable their ad blocker before they can see the content on that page. Mm -hmm. I, I do. Yeah. I do too. Yep. We're not alone. I'll, I'll search. I'll search for something and a bunch of reports or something will come up on different mm -hmm. pages, but Forbes is the most guilty. <laughs> They will scream at me to disable my ad blocker and oh, oh yeah, I forgot and I'm out of there. I can find the information somewhere else. That seems to be the tendency. I mean, in this uh, age of uh, attention span economy, I mean, we just don't have the patience for that. And we'll just hit the eject button and go look for the info right. elsewhere. Um, there's some other interesting statistics in a report from last year that was published by PageFair called the state of the blocked web. Um, <clears throat> the results of that study said that the use of ad blockers in the United States lags that of Asian countries considerably, hmm. which is kind of interesting. Um, yeah. However, the use of ad blockers is expected to skyrocket in North America. And 11% of the global internet population is already blocking ads on the web. So okay. we're just going to see that uh, skipping ads like or, or just not seeing them at all continue and there's something interesting that's going to happen in nine days from now which is on the 15th of february the ad blocker that is natively built into chrome is going to to launch so when you refresh your chrome browser on the 15th or any time so that's there, interesting so google is pandering to the real behavior of its users in you know, which case, is, rather than to the advertisers, huh. which which they are one of which, or at least right, right, like it, yeah, it seems cannibalistic or contradictory in some. They're way. a platform yeah. for advertising. You think about it. I mean, that's mm -hmm. how Google makes money, right? Is hmm. uh, I mean, so, so there's good. some conflict there that's going to have to be resolved over it's the next be few interesting. years in some way or another. It's yeah, it's going to be interesting because Chrome is the is the most widely used web browser in the world and has been since May of uh, 2016. It edged out Internet okay. Explorer and just continued to gain uh, traction since then. Mm. So um, expect to see more pay product placement in all forms of entertainment on the Internet and social media platforms as well. OK. Hmm. So so it sounds like everybody's got to take it easy. <laughs> the well, yeah, they're have to can't come on too strong here. We're not going to sit still for it. I mean, if it's yeah. if it's so contrived and like the like we mentioned a minute ago, like the TV mm -hmm. commercials from years ago, where the the actor turned to the camera and and pitched mm -hmm. the product uh, today, that that just won't work. So they're going to have to use a delicate touch and. Uh, Brands will be using those methods to gain exposure to, to consumers because, um, in my opinion, traditional advertising is going to die out completely eventually. Hmm. So, yeah, they will have to take it easy. Um, they, they don't want to be in our face, you know, so overtly. Mm -hmm. So it's going to take a careful balancing act to, to keep those types of promotions from being detrimental to uh, the customer experience, which is... Hmm. So important. So how that advertisement makes me feel as the viewer, how that product placement makes me feel as the viewer. I'm wondering if there's an example that really stands out that we can share with our viewers. Uh, 
yeah, there's a, there's an excellent one. There's a couple okay. of good ones. So um, one of the most famous product placements of all time was in the motion picture Castaway with with uh, uh, okay okay with Tom Hanks, where he's the Federal Express executive, the very mm-hmm. uptight guy who goes to Russia, and then the Federal right. Express cargo plane crashes, and then he becomes uh, stranded on a desert isle for for four years. Uh, so FedEx spent a lot of money <clears throat> to be, excuse me, <clears throat> FedEx spent a fair chunk of change to be an integral part of that that story. Okay. Uh, besides the plane and him working for, for FedEx and seeing FedEx constantly, constantly, it was uh, it was such that because it was part of the story, we didn't go, oh, gosh, you know, FedEx again. No, yeah, I did. I don't even remember noticing it. Oh, right. It's most people obvious didn't. when you say what company did he work for, FedEx. Yeah, yeah. and it hmm. continued as he's on the island and, uh, you know, he starts opening the Federal Express boxes. You see, you see those boxes right. again and again. And hmm. I don't know if you remember the end of the film when he's finally, you know, he's finally rescued and is back in, uh, in Memphis where – FedEx is and he he takes the one FedEx box that he never opened and and delivers it to the the woman who's like an mm-hmm. artist or has a gallery or something. So the the continuity was throughout. Um, mm-hmm. However, and even with the message of we we deliver it under yeah. any conditions. <laughs> so that didn't make us feel so much. That was just an excellent example of paid product placement because it was integral to the story. The most famous product placement and, and like the it's the it's the coup de gras. It's the it's the one to shoot for as far as the way that they did it is when excuse me, his character uh Chuck Nolan was the name of the character in the movie that Tom Hanks played. Um you know he opens the the FedEx box that has the volleyball in it, the Wilson volleyball right. and uh he gets company, so to speak, and you know, he's all by himself and he gets company from a, you know, the most unlikely character, quote unquote, mm-hmm. you know, air quotes around the, the volleyball eventually became Wilson, you know, Chuck, right. Chuck Nolan's only friend during the four years where he stranded. And this product was very captivating. This product placement was very captivating and notable uh, for a very particular reason, because besides the paid product placement, Chuck didn't just talk about it. He talked to it. Hmm. So um, this inanimate object of this ball became an actual character that listened to to Chuck and provided him companionship during that long period of solitude uh, in a way that resonated with with the audience. And we could all feel the grief of Tom Hanks' character, Chuck, when when he finally makes the the you know the last ditch effort to Uh escape his island parrot, you know, his island prison. And he makes makeshift raft and he's out there at sea and he gets hammered by the big wave. And, and Wilson is, is floating away and he's crying and he's screaming. (laughs) I'm sorry, Wilson. I mean, he's weeping and he, to a ball, (laughs) to a ball. Exactly. But you know, seeing that in the theater or later on DVD or on cable or whatever. I mean, you're not thinking about it like that. You're feeling, you're feeling some pain. uh, Right. That he's empathizing. Exactly. So, I mean, that was a heartfelt, that was a very heartfelt moment. And just like you said, I mean, to a ball, but Mm -hmm. um, we, we didn't think of it as a ball. Wilson became a character and that, that was masterful. That was just masterful on the part of, of Wilson and um, the results were really impressive. Okay. I mean, was this product placement effective? It really was. It was, it was pretty amazing. So Wilson's Sporting Goods company created a promotional ball, a volleyball with the likeness of Wilson with the facial markings. You know, there was a handprint that he had used to make kind of the face on the volleyball and, um, it was called the the Wilson Castaway Volleyball, and <laughs> okay. get yeah. your own. <laughs> yeah, hmm. so uh, the film came out in two thousand. That that ball yeah. became available right thereafter, and twelve years later, two thousand twelve, it was still selling 
on Amazon, at, at giant retailers like Amazon and Target. And the sales dwindled after after that in 2012. But 12 years is a long run for a product. For it's anything. Kind of a <laughs> it is a novelty uh, version of a volleyball. I don't know that right. volleyball players would have used a Wilson one, but people bought it for, you know, it, 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 Wilson became a part of pop culture. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, it, she, whatever. I mean, Wilson was part of part of our lives and, and memorable. And, you know, people people still remember Wilson today and remember uh, the thing. I don't think they'll ever forget him. Mm -hmm. You know, when you think about movies, Tom Hanks crying and yelling, I'm sorry, Wilson. <laughs> As right, it's one of those burn into your brain as moments. You float away. Precisely. So, so that example is a great one of, of uh, a company managing to connect their product and themselves with the, their audience. Mm -hmm. How can companies more deliberately, but subtly or delicately, as you put it, do that? The, um, they need to stop interrupting people. And okay. they need to start thinking about how to empathetically connect with people in with storytelling that touches, <clears throat> excuse me, that touches uh, consumers on an emotional level. So make them smile, amuse them, make them reminisce, make them feel nostalgic, make them feel loved, desired, included, uh, inspired, um, motivated, encouraged, valued, aggravated outraged <laughs> even make them feel something and of course your offerings your product or service are going to dictate what type of emotion you want to people to feel but um it's key to make them feel something because it's people that are making buying decisions even so uh -huh. this is this i i mentioned that because it's kind of a no-brainer but a lot of times people think in B2B that doesn't work. Hmm. That's not the case because it's people making the buying decision, not company. Right. It's people right. that work for the companies. And as people, you can touch them on an emotional level too. And um, for, for an example, just off the top of my head, um, you know, to, to get a B2B buyer or a buyer within a B2B company, to feel aggravated, for instance, hmm. could be a good way to touch them and get something mm -hmm. to resonate with them about that they don't have to settle for second best because nobody likes settling for less than what they need. And if the current products or service, services they're using in their business aren't cutting it, and that's aggravating, if you kind of you know, touch on that. I'm not saying twist the knife at all. I'm just mm -hmm. saying make them aware that there there's another alternative, and and here it is, and you kind of do the compare and contrast thing. Okay. So no longer here is our product. It has a bunch of features. You should <laughs> you should like it because of that. But more, well, how can we bring this in and and help somebody feel something? about what we're offering very much very much i mean people don't really care about products and services i mean they don't care that about is. features in the products and services they care about themselves and the, you know the problem that they want solved or the pain that they're feeling or the need they have or in many cases it's just the want they have you know hmm. i mean certainly we all buy things we want that we don't necessarily need, but right. it's it's touching on cool. the emotions that are the underlying drivers to the decision making. Um, you know, we like to think as people, um, especially in a B two B setting, that we're using just rational thinking to make the decisions. But emotion is definitely a factor, and we might not mm -hmm. want to admit it or realize it. But you know, we have emotions and. And they definitely have an impact on, on right. purchase intent and, and actual purchases. So companies can't expect these opportunities to just come by every day. What do they have to do to get in front of their customers without interrupting them? 
Well, the if it's not paid content, paid placement, you know, creating content that is interesting to them or, okay. or that is relevant to them. But, you know, again, you have to think about attention spans and how short they are today. Um, so it has to be, it has to be short and punchy and on point. Okay. You know, most people are tuning out things. Well, almost everyone tunes out messages that aren't relevant to them, mm -hmm. but the messages that are relevant about products or services or any kind of offering that are germane to us, germane to our life situation, our job, our family, someone we care about, you know, our ears perk up and we want mm -hmm. to know about those things. Suddenly you have my attention. Yeah. yeah. That, that yeah. happens it's to like, me. I'll, I'll ignore a hundred YouTube videos, but then one will come on or commercials, right? Mm -hmm. One mm -hmm. will come on and, and in five seconds I'm entranced. I'm like, what, what is this? This is suddenly, and I'll watch that for an hour if it's, if it's relevant, but it has to pass that little hurdle for, for getting the engagement at the start. It does. And often the hurdle isn't little. I mean, it's a, it's a large hurdle. It's a filter. So right. It's hard to get through, but you know, we're keenly interested in information about the things that we're keenly interested in to be intentionally redundant. I mean, there are some <laughs> things, you know, pick it, your hobby, your profession, mm -hmm. uh, you know, your children, your significant other, whatever. And you're thinking in their best interest that when you come across, come across information about those things, you don't get tired of it. You want to know more. Mm -hmm. You will subscribe to a channel or subscribe to an email list or whatever, because you want that info. You want to be informed. You want to get cutting edge info about, about the brand, about the industry, whatever. Um, so what are some, some touch points where people can get that engagement, where companies can go to find people and engage with them? Well, they need to engage with them at, every touch point. So email, okay. the website, um, online chat, um, trade shows, seminar, mm -hmm. wherever the brand has a presence and people can yeah. interact with the brand or the company. I use those words inter interchangeably. Some companies have many brands, um, but it's wherever you and, and social media. Oh my gosh. You know, wherever mm -hmm. you have a presence where you are interacting with consumers, that is a touch point. Of course, retail, you know, I mean, bricks and mortar mm -hmm. uh, for, for stores or, you know, it could be showrooms anywhere where you and the consumer, you know, touch mm -hmm. an interface is a touch point. And at all of those places where is are the places to provide content that's that's relevant. Okay. And getting engagement. Engagement. I mean, I, I talk about this constantly. Um, I can't stress it enough because it's so important. It is so mm -hmm. important to engage people, engage consumers, engage customers, paying customers, consumers would be prospective customers, engage them in dialogue. Okay. Talk to them. They want to be heard. They demand to be heard. They, they, uh, they insist upon it nowadays. We want to be heard. And companies need to really, really, really listen and listen to learn and listen to understand and take that feedback from uh, from the market, from consumers, mm -hmm. from uh, other stakeholders, even vendors, suppliers, would be partners, uh, companies in your niche that are not competitors. There's so much information to glean that's really insightful and can help make decisions regarding how to shape your product offerings, your service offerings, and on point to this episode, even shape your marketing. That's important. I mean, wow. if, if you, if you would have talked to, if you were T-Mobile and you talked to T-Mobile brand advocates and other people, even just using a cell phone, not necessarily T-Mobile customers and who doesn't use a cell phone? Mm -hmm. and got some, and I'm not talking about a contrived uh, focus group, but just got some feedback. Like, what do you, what do you think about this? Does this, does this resonate with you? Here's our concept. Hmm. You know, they've been doing that in the entertainment industry for, for years. You know, I, I started my, 
my professional marketing career at Warner Brothers in Burbank at their headquarters and was interested to learn. Um, you know, they, they write different endings for movies and they shoot different endings for movies right. And, right. and they test them. They'll, they'll have a theater full of people and they'll do what they call an exit poll and they'll say, what'd you think of the ending? And they'll have a, another group looking at um, the other ending and they research it a lot and they'll go back and re-edit and, and shoot the movie uh, or not, not shoot it differently, but they'll edit it differently because they've shot so much, much footage and they'll even edit it. Like if it's going to get an R rating and they pay the MPAA association, the fee to say, what do you think? And they're like, you know, you need to remove these curse words and take out this nudity. And then you get a PG 13 getting that market feedback is important. The PG 13 audience is much, much bigger than the, the R. So, Again, just get all the feedback possible from the market by engaging. Engage in dialogues. I say this again and again. I can't stress it enough because it's it's an imperative. Engage in in conversations that lead to meaningful dialogues and establish relationships with customers. That's what they want. That's what hmm. you know. They cra it's more than a craving nowadays. It's it's a it's becoming more and more of a demand. Like, listen to me. You know, I'm talking to you. I have information to share. I have good things to say. I have criticism. And, you know, there's all, there's just a plethora of information out there. Well, I see Stefan has uh, returned. So yeah. that, must, <laughs> that must be something. <laughs> yeah, must yeah. Mean something. Uh, I'm, I'm, I was just trying to fight Facebook hackers. Uh -huh. and you guys are uh, uh, having uh, that uh, live streaming on, so it become it became a uh, a rendezvous for for people that do not like what we do. So they're just trying to mess with the Facebook Facebook uh, Facebook. I'm making an undoubtedly some uh, some some advertisement for Buick because I'm saying Facebook instead of Facebook. <laughs> And uh, I think the, the clock is ticking because I think that, um, Stephen, you have an engagement in, in two minutes, I think. I do. So, so I'm right. Right. Everyone's Everyone's time. Would you like to check in the box? Just say, hey, hey, guys. <laughs> Pop in. What's ticking? Pop in. I, I really appreciate it. Me, Jason, <laughs> thanks for your time. Thanks for hosting. You bet. Hey, I want great. you to sing us out with that, uh, that Maya Angelou quote. Oh, yeah. This is, all about, this is all about feeling. I've been talking about what we were um, or speaking to what we were talking about before about engaging people and getting them to feel. So Maya Angelou has a, uh, a quote that's been used a number of times. I'm sure you've heard it before, but make sure I have it exactly right here. It's people <laughs> will forget what you said. People forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. And, and that's really true. So when you engage people, your consumers, your customers, Make them feel. Hmm. Make them feel something. Thank even if much. it's aggravated. <laughs> yeah, even you if bet. it's aggravated. If that's appropriate. If that's appropriate. Okay. Um, thank you well, all. Thank you for sharing a lot of factual information. This was uh, a discussion that was really um, numerically based. It wasn't just opinions, right? It was. Uh, it was going back to real data. Exactly. So I look forward to talking with you next week. Okay, looking to looking forward to it as well. Thank you all. Uh, if people have a question, they can ask it, uh, and and yes. can come into the um, the comment sections here. Uh, Stephen Monaco and Jason Kenningas and myself will address uh, those questions. And um, I think we have an appointment for account based marketing servers as a service on Thursday, same right, time, right. 1 p.m. Um, I think that's going to be quite interesting because we're going to jump into what I call the account-based marketing strategy and mm. what goes before uh, using tools uh, with an ABM SaaS. Because, in fact, if you're not preparing yourself to get into that reverse funnel activities instead of doing the classical and conservative um, lead funnel that everyone is mm -hmm. using these days, uh, you will be probably unprepared to engage with all your advocates and that are, you know, building your audience and your community, and within that community, inside of it, you have your uh, your your customers. 
So that would be something Sweet. I think exciting and interesting for marketers, uh, CMOs, CEOs, and people that want to dive into uh, new technology martech. Right. Definitely a new kind of marketing tool that's much more powerful than anything I've seen. Yeah, and I there. think next week we're going to also have um, a closing engine topic coming soon that we will uh, you know, jump on your uh, Facebook page to know what's the topic, the upcoming topic. And um, I'll be happy to, uh, to engage with you, uh, Jason, to sure. have some meaningful discussions, um, sharing some slides and 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 toolkits with uh, with the audience mm. as well. Okay. Well, I look forward to that. And thanks again to my BBTV for hosting today's Future Now. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Jason. Okay. Talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.